We have some special guests with us this morning. So I'm going to, before I teach, I want to give some honor where honors do. Pastor Alex, come on up here for a moment if you would. Give Pastor Alex a big hand clap. Hallelujah. Good to have you here this morning, old buddy. So go ahead and share with everybody what has been going on with you and share your heart with us for a few minutes, man. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's, it's good to be here. I know I, my wife and I were able to come, was it December? I think, and, and visit here, and I, I wish she was here. That's probably one of the hardest things uh, for me this morning is having her not here, but she, she is definitely here with you, loves all of you, many of you, and would want to be here as well. Uh, but I, I got a chance to come back on this Sunday, and it, it all worked out that it was the seventh anniversary of the church. O- only the Lord could have done that, and there's so many things going on behind the scenes to to make that work, um, and very, very glad to be here. Um, many of you I, I haven't even met, which is really exciting. I'm, I'm glad that you're here and that you've been able to connect here. Um, I trust Pastor Justin with my life, and I know that you are all in very good hands, as I've said before. But I, I have a few things um, that I want to um, touch or just kind of share with you, and then I want to invite Pastor Josh um, to share just a few things as well, Um, who is my pastor in Oklahoma, uh, where we live now. I brought him with me, so it's very special to me that he's here. But if there's anything that I've thought, and we we came here, uh, we flew in yesterday, so we've just been here for a little bit, and we're headed back pretty soon too, but um, in, in our time just connecting with people here and being able to spend time with Ron um, at his house last night, the one thing that has stood out to me more than anything, even while worshiping here, is that the gospel is worth giving your life to. It's, it's always worth putting all of your chips in when you know what God has done for you. Because you're already forgiven. You, you've already been purchased. You're all, you're all, the, the grace of God has been given to you through Jesus. And I, I could not be more convinced of anything in my life than knowing that reorienting my entire world and doing whatever the Lord asked me to do is the most important thing that I could do. And that, involve, that could involve making big decisions in your life. It could involve moving across the country. It could involve selling things. It, whatever, whatever the Lord asks you to do, I want to encourage you to open up your life to say, the gospel is worth giving your life to. When, when you see people, when you've experienced people that have done that, it will move you. And being able to watch um, Ron walk through this season of, of his life has been a huge encouragement to me. I, I had mentioned when I was here a few months ago that um, his wife, Kathy, was ill, and just a few weeks later, I don't remember how long it had been, but she passed away. But we were able to come back here and be a part of um, the celebration service and the worship service for something that in the natural makes no sense, right? And I, I can't give you an answer in the natural for why that's happening, because the grief is real, and it's very intense, But I've been able to see Ron and his entire family live fully surrendered to the Lord through that season. And if nothing else, it absolutely proves that your entire life is worth giving away to the gospel. Whatever God would have for you to do. And I just, I feel that being here and in, in Ron and all the struggles that, he, that you have had, I know that the gospel is always worth it. Even when we don't see it, even when we don't hear it, even when we don't understand it, the gospel is always worth giving your life to. And that's, that's what we've chosen to do, and I, I just feel that strongly. I know you've chosen that. Amen. Absolutely. And I know that we want that for every single one of you. Amen. As many of you have done by evidence of the commitment and the sacrifices that have been made for this church to still be here seven years later. What a testimony to God's grace. Hallelujah. Is it not? 
Amen. What a testimony to God's grace. Amen. Well, when we when when we moved to Oklahoma, um, away from the church here, we we knew that finding a church was going to be difficult for us, um, and it, you know it it could take time. Having planted this church, not knowing what we were going to walk into, was a little bit scary for Darla and I. And I think it was Pastor Justin. I mean, I don't know if I've shared this story or not, but um, Pastor Justin, I did some googling, or I don't know what it was, but she he. He found a church in our city called The Way and told... And I thought told, that was a great name of a church. A I don't know. So I, Justin told Darla, just texted her or something, and said, hey, you guys should check out The Way. So we looked it up online. We kind of read through the website, and, and it, it just kind of stood, stood out to us that there was something that it's, if we felt the spirit even when we were reading the website. So we decided to go and visit that church, and little did we know it was a church plant Wow! that had just been started in Edmond maybe two months before we had moved to Edmond. And Hallelujah. if that wasn't enough, the Sunday that Pastor Josh started the church in Edmond was the Sunday that Pastor Justin became the lead pastor of the way here. How, can't write that story, guys. It's just been amazing. So over a year now, we've been attending the church. Darla um, serves on the worship team, and I've been able to, to interact with Pastor Josh. Um, we've gone to lunch a number of times. He's been over at our house, and uh, I've, I've, I really respect this man. Amen. And the thing that you need to know is that just like your pastor here, Pastor Josh does not teach things to people that God has not spoken to his own heart. So you're not going to find something in him in any other day of the week than you would see him talking about on Sunday. And you guys are very familiar with that, aren't you? Because that is, that is your pastor. There, there is no secret issues happening in his life because Justin would tell me about them. That's the relationship that we have and that's the humility that he has. If something were to come into his life that didn't look like Jesus, he would admit that to me. And he would expect me to challenge him on it. And to, to, to push him back to, to committing that to the Lord. That's mm -hmm. just the kind of man that he is. And you guys know that. But I'm here to tell you that Pastor Josh is that too. Amen. Amen. And so I, I, have, I have been very challenged by the intimacy that he has with the Lord and the beauty of the gospel that flows from him. He's very gifted in what he does. And so um, Josh offered to come out here and visit our church here, which is a, a huge honor to me to have him here. Um, so I just want to ask him to come up here and share, if you wouldn't mind, Josh, Amen. would you come up here? And yes, thank you. I, just a few, he could talk for hours, right? You give a, you give a mic <laughs> to a pastor, right? Um, he could talk for a long time, as, as any of us could. But I, what I want him to share is a brief summary or overview of what the Lord did in his heart through years of ministry, leading him to plant a church where he's at in Edmond now, under, under a, com a completely different understanding of the gospel than, than what he had been living through for so many years. And I think it's going to challenge you. I think it's going to encourage you. And I, I really hope that the Spirit speaks um, just when you hear him share. So, Josh, if you wouldn't mind. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, really, I want to say I'm really, really honored to be here. I'm really humbled um, to be here. I didn't want to speak and say anything. but <laughs> So, um, I'm probably that pastor that uh, you don't have to give me a mic. I'm really okay just by being in the back. But I want to say I'm really honored to be here to be in a house that 
um, is, I believe, generational, and I believe that you and your wife um, really do carry the heart of the Lord. And so the short time that I've gotten to meet you, I've just been really impacted deeply. But I just want to say I honor you guys. Come on, if you know you got some of the best pastors that this region has to offer, why don't you put your hands together for the leaders of this house? Really honored to be here. Honored, honored, honored. Um, yes, yeah, so my name's Joshua. Um, I'm married to an extremely gorgeous woman. I mean, my goodness, I'm ready to go back home now, just to be honest with you. I, I, can't, I catch a flight in a little bit. Um, you know, things become legal. You can say things after you get married that were not legal before you got married, and it becomes legal because you're married. Anyway, I just thank you for that overwhelming response right there. But um, we have two children. I have a son named Honor, and I have a little girl named Sailor, Sailor Norris, and they are just the joys of my life. But yeah, we have a church that um, that Papa put on our heart, and it, you hear me say Papa because Jesus never called God God. He called him Father or Abba or Papa. He actually called him God twice, but that was when he was hanging on the cross, quoting Psalms 22. Every other time he was Abba, he was Dad, he was Papa to him. And so, I've been I've had I've been calling the Lord Papa now for almost. 15 years, and so if you hear me say that, that's what that means, but Papa put it on our heart to go to Edmond, Oklahoma, and to really to, to start a church, but he wanted us to give birth to a family. Very rarely do I use the term church in church. I often use the term family because heaven is, they're not having a church service in heaven, it's a family. Scripture says every family in heaven and earth, and so we wanted to build something that looked a lot like heaven, and to be honest with you, I didn't have a blueprint for that. I didn't know what that looked like. I knew every church had a building. I knew churches had parking lots and ushers and greeters and preachers and pastors and sermons and songs and all the stuff, but I didn't have the details, Pastor, to what that literally looked like. And um, So what we've learned to do is we've learned to pray and obey, and we've taken the uncharted path of doing things that may not bring a lot of people, and they may not put you in a magazine, but it's allowed us to catch heaven's heart. And so a few things that we've done that have really, really helped us is one is we had to be willing to say we'll do things even if it doesn't, if it's not in the mainstream. For some reason, everybody's trying to be in the mainstream. <laughs> we just wanted to catch Papa's heart and say, Lord, what are you asking us to do? And so um, I left the job that I was at, the church that I was at. I had a really secure job. Um, it was a big minute. We had, we, at the time, we had over a thousand people when I was there. That's pretty good, pretty good for your church, right? My father-in-law was leading that ministry. Um, we had a beautiful home, but we left all of that and uh, moved to a city that honestly I wasn't a fan of when I before I went there. But the Lord won my heart in that city, and we just began to build. We didn't have so much as a microphone cord, like legitimately. We didn't have a building. We had about ten people that said we would go with you. But we heard the Lord said, go. And a lot of times when the Lord speaks to you, he doesn't give you, he doesn't give you all the details. He keeps things from you. Because he knows that if you knew the full package, you wouldn't say yes to it. So he'll say, Alex, why don't you go to Deschler? It's going to be amazing. You're like, oh, wow. I'm going to go to this big bustling city, and you get here, and I'm like, well, praise the Lord. God told me to come to Deschler, right? Told me to go to Edmond, Oklahoma, which is still a very racially divided city. He told me to go to Edmond, Oklahoma, where there's not any really any other multi-ethnic spirit-filled churches. So we go there, and by God's grace, a building that is on the busiest street that runs north and south in our city opened up to us. But listen, we didn't have so much as a microphone cord. When we went in the building, the building already had chairs in it. Listen, it, the, the, that building was a church building for the past 25 years. The pastor just basically got tired and left. When he left, he said, nothing in here works. When we went there, it was very old, but the stuff did work. I'm like, how did, a, how did a, that sound system go from not working to working? You know, and, and the stories could go on and on. Um, but we found out just by trusting the Lord that God was going to do some really first-time things. There's a whole category in heaven called first-time things. If I would say, you ever heard of this? You'd be like, I've never heard of that. Well, it's, it's a first-time thing. And things that are new to us are not new to heaven. It's just new to us. The a apple phone was not new to heaven. 
It's just new to us, but the idea's been around for eons. We go to Edmund, just following the heart of the heart of the Lord. And in our first week, we don't live stream or anything like that. In our first week, a hundred and and I had guests come from out of town. We had 147 people. But watch this. In a city still very racially divided, we had Filipinos show up. We had Native Americans show up. We had Caucasian Americans show up. We had African Americans show up. We had Hispanics show up. Can I tell you something? And they've been showing up every week since. And it's not because we have a fancy stage and this amazing building because that's just not the case. But we do carry the heart of the Lord. And I want to encourage you guys. You are your most anointed when you're your most authentic. Hear what I just said? And the most authentic you is what will attract people. And you guys have some real gems in this region. I mean, I've met a few of the people. Of course, even this morning, I've got to shake some of your hands. But there's a hospitality in you guys. There's a kindness and a warmth in you that that's really not just because you're putting on. That's really the heart of the Lord just beginning to come through you. So think it not strange. We got people that drive an hour and 15 minutes one way just to come to our church. And they've been doing that now for several, well, over, I guess, six or seven months. Don't, God can bring people here that are not from here. We got families that are now moving to our state to be a part of what we're doing. Think it not strange. People will go sit in a horse barn if they believe the Lord is actually there. And God can give you something so organic, so authentic, that it doesn't just attract people from this city. It'll draw people from all around. And if you didn't know it, you have a rare gift here, which is what Pastor Alex was saying. You have a really, really rare gift here in who your leaders are, and it's a beautiful thing. Real quick, a couple of things that I believe in that I think are true for whatever church you are is, is some things I would just want to share with you really quickly, but I do these in our church. I teach our leaders behind the scenes is that we're called to be the salt of the earth. Everybody know what salt is? Jesus said, you're the salt of the earth. He said, but if you lose your savor or your ability to flavor, he said, what good are you? Salt affects everything it touches, yet it's affected by nothing. When salt touches beef, do they say that is beefy salt? No, they say what? That's some what? Because salt affects everything it touches, yet it is affected by nothing. You are meant. You are the salt of the what? Not of heaven. You're not meant to be the salt of heaven. Heaven don't need salt. The earth needs salt. So God says, I want to take the salt of Ron's life, and I want to throw you in some seasonless or bland places. I want to get you around some bland people who don't know the flavor of life, which is me. And I want to throw you in there. I want to take a Justin, and I want to throw you in Deschler. Because there's some people that need to know their flavor. They need to know what seasoning they are. And salt doesn't affect things by being close to it. It affects it by actually touching it. You're going to have to touch some dirt. You're going to have to touch a mess. You might have to touch an adulterer or an addict or a gossiper or a person who don't know their identity. They may be confused about their gender or their emotional state, but that's okay. You are the salt of the earth, and what is on you will get on them. You affect everything you're touched, but you're meant to be affected by nothing. Greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. Secondly, we're supposed to be the light of the world, not the light of heaven. Heaven doesn't need lights. As a matter of fact, the Bible says there's no sun there because the Son of God himself is the light. There are no shadows in heaven. You know what it takes to require no shadows? That means light has to come from every direction. Light shines in every direction in that place. This region needs a light. Hence the way is here. Jesus would go on to say, you're the light of the world. He said, but men are not meant to light lamps and put them under a bushel. I want to say this. Whatever bushel you're wearing, just take it off, man. I used to wear the bushel of religion really well. Now, nah, nobody in Deschler has ever done that. I'm telling you what I did. <laughs> I was preaching the gospel while watching pornography. I was getting on airplanes and traveling. 
and holding men, massive crusades. And I had all of the bondage, and I, was, I had my own little bushel on me. But I encountered the real Jesus. Not the American version. I'm talking about the real Jesus who wasn't afraid of my stuff, and I opened up my world to him. And God took this skinny Indian kid from John Station, North Carolina, and he just ravished my heart with the gospel, with the good news. The gospel is not so much about you and I saying a prayer, hoping to be received by God, which, by the way, that doesn't exist in the Bible anyway. The gospel is not about us receiving God into our life. But the gospel is actually about him receiving us into his life. I didn't need need to receive him into my life. I needed to know that he had already received me into his life. And the beautiful thing about the gospel, friends, this light of the world, this salt of the earth, is we don't evangelize the earth to try to save it. We actually evangelize the world to tell them you're already saved and you don't know it. Jesus already died on a cross 2,022 years ago, (laughs) never to die again. This is the message of the gospel that we're taking. And I'm telling you, I'm seeing it slowly but surely beginning to bring transformation in the hearts of people when they recognize that before they were ever lost in Adam, they were already found in Christ Jesus. And this is the gospel. It's not the soon-to-be-finished work of the cross. It's not to stay tuned. There's coming a sequel. It is the it is finished work of the cross. Some people hear the almost good news. But the word gospel in the Greek is egenulin, and it means the too good to be good news, but yet it's true. If what you believe about God isn't too good to be true, you have reason to question it. The way community church is here to tell the people the good news of the gospel. I want to say this. God isn't upset with nobody. He's actually in a pretty good mood. I talked with him this morning. He was in a really good mood. (laughs) For some reason, it's just people that say they believe in him. They're not in a good mood, you know. (laughs) You go to some churches, I'm trying to figure out, am I in a church or am I in a club? Like, I'm trying to figure out, what is this, man? Like, was that an usher or was that a bouncer at the door? You know them churches, man? (laughs) Now, y'all ain't never been in, but I've been to them churches, right? But we have good news. Do you believe that God really is good? Do you believe that God is 100% the way Jesus portrayed him to be? If you believe that, you should be the happiest people in all of this region because that God is your father. Come on, if you believe that one time, say hallelujah.